for me, there's one big red, and he was born a hundred years ago, on March 29, 1917. If others of the same nickname preceded him, they were simply opening acts. And anyone since, call them big red all you want, but to me, they're imposters. When I was young, I could whinny and run with the best of them, and with my man of war blood, no one on our track team was faster. And if I was in the woods and a tree trunk lay across the path, I became Man o War's son, Battleship, in the Grand National. I spent hours studying photographs of Man o War. Those countless images from his full photo through the final portrait reflected a startling, high headed pride and smoldering power. I read countless stories about his life, poring over every detail I could find. The sacred words of the great Joe Palmer in describing Man o War gave me goosebumps. He was as near to a living flame as horses ever get. Clearly, Man of War was no mere mortal. I wrote books about him in my youth, pencil scribing on line, notebook paper, using photographs lovingly clipped from magazines and taped in place. My all-time favorite photograph? It's a C.C. Cook image of Man of War at the height of his racing career, as stunning and imperious as a deity should be, gazing off toward who knows what. I dreamed about him both when I was awake and when I was sleeping. Many years have passed, and I've been photographing racehorses for nearly a half century now. Magical names like Ruffian, Secretariat, Seattle Slough, American Pharaoh. But if I could go back in time and photograph just one thing, it would be Man of War. Instead, I decided to visit spots where he raced, posed, courted mares, breathed his last, lay buried. I've devotedly chased Man War's ghost for more than four decades now. Some tracks where he raced still exist, Belmont, Aqueduct, Saratoga. It's really easy to envision Man War along those horse paths, tossing his head and testing his riders, but there are conflicting stories as to which barns in which he lived. And I've visited the site of Aubrey de Grey's racetrack, where the Big Red Colt won the Potomac Handicap in record time. But that track was shuttered more than a half century ago, and any barn that might have housed him is long gone. There's no doubt where he lived for many of his racing days, however. Glen Riddle Farm in Berlin, Maryland. There, Big Red trained before his racing career began, returning there between campaigns and heading there after retirement for a short while. Horses were long gone from the Glen Riddle property by the time of my first visit nearly 20 years ago, but they could still be felt in the empty paddocks, the abandoned barns, and on the old racetrack. Standing on that old track, now thick with weeds, one could easily envision young man of war's early matches with the highly touted Golden Broom, long before either of their actual careers began. And in the red old barn shed row, just the slightest imagination made the crisscrossing raccoon tracks become man of war's hoof prints. Along a farm road, a rickety old oversized arch with a barely visible man of war written across the top seemed to be held up solely by the dense overgrowth surrounding it. Other deteriorating buildings housed dented buckets old hay bales, even x-rays, and rotting halters, their pedigree nameplates boasting sires' names like Al Sab and Count Fleet, were strewn about a long abandoned tack room. I made another pilgrimage there in 2004 after learning the property was being developed, my one last chance to try to record the history that Big Red himself had seen there. Glen Riddle, the farm, is gone now, replaced by an expensive gated community and golf course of the same name. The old arch is gone, too, although a new one was built in his honor. Manowar's renovated barn, a water tower, and a rusty starting gate remain behind. That gate is from after Manowar's time, but was no doubt used by many of his descendants. I've visited the property in recent years, but for me, the big red ghost has galloped away. I also don't feel ghosts at the site of Manowar's birthplace, Nursery Stud. Developed long ago, there isn't a hint of August Belmont's old Lexington area farm, a roadside historical marker noting the basic area where Man of War was born doesn't inspire me. And if there are any whispers of Man of War around the property where Red originally entered Stud, once called Hinata Farm, I haven't found him. Perhaps it's because in both cases there's no exact spot that I can pinpoint where Man of War actually lived, breathed, walked. But for me, no doubt largely due to photographs snapped by countless lucky photographers of his era, his ghost still stands tall at the two faraway farm stallion barns in which he lived. For some 15 years, Manawa reigned supreme in a faraway stallion barn now part of Mount Brilliant Farm. When I first visited the property in the 1990s, no horses lived in Manawar's old stud barn, and it was suffering from photographically fascinating neglect. His stall stood empty, the door to his adjacent paddock hanging at an angle. 
On an interior stall door, the words Man of War could still faintly be seen, reflecting where countless tourists had rubbed fingertips across long gone raised letters. Forgotten gravestones, deep in weeds behind the barn, included some of Manowar's dates and daughters, and his early nemesis, Golden Broom. Standing in his empty stall, it was easy to imagine the greatest of all racehorses having his red gold coat rubbed to a sheen by devoted groom Will Harbit, or haughtily checking out his countless admiring visitors, or awaiting, perhaps impatiently considering his inner fire, his turnout time. The fact that his barn was decrepit, his old paddock overgrown, pointed simply to the reality of the decade's passage. That barn has been lovingly renovated in recent years, the weeds encroaching upon the graveyard are removed, and an old bell that was once rung whenever an offspring of Manowar won a race was moved to a place of honor. Racing has Mount Brilliant's owner, Greg Goodman, to thank for that. Big Red's final home is just up the road at Manowar Farm. The fact that he lived there for over a decade has been somewhat forgotten. But Manowar resided there in the first barn's front left stall. There are no outward signs of his time there. No words remain on the stall door. The barn was renovated around 2000 out of respect for its history, but although it's still an active farm, that barn now has missing window panes, peeling paint, a broken door. But missing paint and glass can't change what was here. You can still feel him. Just walk on the farm's driveway next to the stallion barn, where Will posed his immortal charge countless times for countless visitors. Just stand in his stall, or in the barn's aisleway where Manowar lay in state before being buried. Or stand in the nearby yard on a quiet day, and all days are quiet out here on Huffman Mill Pike, and imagine the embalmed body of Manowar being buried here. Imagine the somber crowd the day of that funeral service in 1947, a service nationally Ladies broadcast on the radio. This crowd was estimated today, anywhere from 500 to 2,000. And imagine the ceremony the following year when an oversized statue by Herbert Hazeltine was placed above Manowar's final resting place. That final resting place was still marked on tourist maps when I first visited the Bluegrass State in 1977. But not long before my visit, Manowar's remains, as well as those of some of his equine relatives, were moved to the Kentucky Horse Park. The site was not yet open to the public, and my visit with him would have to wait. I visited Kentucky again seven years later, and countless times in the more than 30 years since. And in mornings, afternoons, sunset, and at night when the statue is lit by spotlights, I find myself trekking to the park to pay homage, snap photographs, and to spend time as close as possible to the mortal remains of my ghostly muse. For the rest of my days, I'll continue visiting him there, and seeking out places where man war breathed, galloped, raced, and set his immortal gaze upon who knows what. The simple words spoken by horseman Ira Dryman at Manowar's funeral 70 years ago spoke for devoted admirers back then. They speak for me now. He touched the imagination of men and they saw different things in him. But one thing they will all remember was that he brought exaltation into their hearts.